Hello and welcome to this special showcase of Reinventing Homes, a programme for the Chartered Institute of Housing and ITN Business. The COVID pandemic brought into sharp focus the importance of our homes, both as a place to live and work. And now, as everyday prices rise and the need to cut our carbon emissions grows, radical solutions are once again needed to reinvent our homes. About a fifth of CO2 emissions in the UK come from our, from our housing stock. So there's a real challenge there for us that we need to meet head on. And there's a big role to play for, for social landlords in, in helping to decarbonise our, our, our stock. One solution in Huddersfield is a new type of council home, one that is flat packed and assembled on site so it's quick to build and energy efficient. Even before this current cost of living crisis, energy bills have been an issue for a long time for our tenants. So they tell us that, so we've responded by designing homes that reduce the energy that they need to put into the homes to heat them in particular. And retrofitting older stock is another way social housing landlords are making a real difference. What we've done for these tenants, we've taken out that costly fossil fuel, that gas supply, and we've given them renewable technologies which will dramatically reduce the running costs of their homes. This house now is a happy house and it's a lot warmer. You know, the wallpaper used to fall off before, but now there's no damp. New standards for new builds will soon be in place, but on this development in Birmingham, they're already meeting them. Future home standards is due to come into the building regulations in 2025, and as part of that we'll see homes produce 80% less CO2 than ones built to current regulations. It's the first of, of a kind for a social housing provider to develop a scheme that models the future home standard. So what is PM1? And these new homes are full of tech, including sensors which will monitor indoor air quality, temperature and energy efficiency. I'm very, very impressed. I'm, I'm so happy about it. Um, it's a really nice property as well. And the, the things that I've been told about the technology involved as well, I'm really excited to get involved and use it. Innovative thinking is also keeping costs low here in Oxford, where another housing provider is retrofitting 60 existing homes with ground source heat pumps. It's just an amazing move forward. If only everybody could get it, then everyone would be benefiting from, from the cheaper bills, wouldn't they? And in Cornwall, the shafts at this former tin mine could offer geothermal heat to nearby homes. We see that as a way of us testing out new technologies, testing out new approaches, to try to make sure that we're doing the best for our customers now, but also planning for the future as well. But in such a beautiful part of the country where many people want to live, there's a real danger locals are being priced out. So over the next five years, we'll be building 6,500 affordable homes. The vast majority will be for rent, um, with about 30% being for shared ownership, where people can start to get on the housing ladder. Live West has provided something that is highly needed in our community. Um, without this, ourselves and our children would have difficulty finding housing in, in many cases. And building the sustainable homes that people can afford also helps support key workers to find homes close to where they work. This part of the population are our teachers, our nurses, our lorry drivers, our paramedics. These are people that we rely on day in, day out. And these very people in large parts of the country don't have access to good quality, affordable homes. So if we, do, if we weren't doing that, we wouldn't be able to function as a society fully. Shared ownership is another option for key workers for whom a home on the open market may be out of reach. It was much more affordable than anything else we looked at. So, um, yeah, so that, that main prompt really was that security and affordability for us. The quality of the houses that we could have afforded wouldn't have been as good as if we were renting. Shared ownership is a fabulous product. I think it is invisible to so many people. Uh, people who would love to have a house but think they can't save the deposit. No, if they only knew, they only need a very small deposit and they just keep buying bits over time until they can own the whole home. They don't have to move to get a bigger home. They can start by buying a smaller proportion of the house they want to bring their children into. On Teesside, it's 
back to the future for one council as it becomes a landlord again. I'm really passionate about council housing and, and I've long felt that it was something that as a local authority we needed to get back into. So in 2015 we became the first local authority that didn't have any stock to reopen our housing revenue account and that was a big milestone for us. As well as a new street of council houses, redevelopment of older homes is transforming them. They were derelict and empty, but unfortunately we didn't have enough money to demolish them, so we had to think out of the box. So you'll see we've thought differently and we've brought the houses back into use and we've merged two houses into one. So what were one bedroom houses or two bedrooms, some are now three or four. Making a house a home isn't without its challenges, and one charitable foundation is helping low-income and vulnerable communities to get the support they need. The first of these are those people that are moving into independent living from homelessness. Uh, we help people with mental health issues, we help people with uh, sensory and physical disabilities, and we help people with who are fleeing domestic violence. We are able to seek out maybe those more innovative, maybe riskier and constructively disrupting models of practice that I think we all recognise are needed if we truly want transformation to happen. We are not a bolt-on to somebody else's job. This is what we are here to do. And the fact that there is such a collaborative, true partnership at the heart of this is what really makes it work. And empowering people to find ways to make living more affordable is what this demonstrator home is all about. With tips on everything from saving energy to cutting costs on furnishings. We've actually worked with a local partnership that does recycled furniture to show how much you could get this house out for, which will be affordable for our tenants and for residents in the local area. Shildon was Britain's first railway town. And when heavy industry closes, an area can really suffer. But social housing providers can also help tenants and residents to find new jobs. The people who like to live in staff help me. Like, Put my, like make my CV up so I can go for the job and stuff like that, and interview skills as well. They've really helped you every step yeah, of the way, haven't they? Definitely. Couldn't be more thankful for them. Aidan was out of work and homeless when another housing provider stepped in and offered him an apprenticeship. They offered support in everything, really, like they'd help you budget offer to help sit with you and make meal plans and they'll come in and you know, check you or looking after yourself. Since obviously I've been employed by them, I've, my life changed to a point I didn't think it ever would, to be honest. And here, supported housing for vulnerable young people comes with youth development coaches on site 24-7. You can have somebody with extreme complex needs and some with less and we try and sort of tailor that, you know, whatever that young person needs, you know, we will go out and do what we can for them. The support was absolutely amazing. I cannot describe to you how brilliant it was. Like, I didn't feel uncomfortable. They didn't make me feel like I was a homeless person. They didn't make me feel I was any different to anybody else. At the other end of the age spectrum, extra care facilities support older people to live independent lives for longer. I like it here. And I like the residence. And I play bingo on. I can go out when I want, come in when I want. She's met loads of friends. Oh yeah. And the staff are amazing, especially the carers. So as people get older, their needs change and we're here to help them with that. So we do lots of things that focus on things like slips, trips and falls prevention, helping people with their posture, looking at diabetes, their salt intake, but we also do loads of fun activities as well. And we're in the garden here today, which the residents uh, enjoy and they participate in maintaining. Supporting people in their homes, whether through improving energy efficiency or by reducing loneliness and isolation, is now more important than ever. The last two years of COVID have really, really heightened this, is that communities come together when there is a challenge. So there are resources and resilience within a community to bring conclusions that will benefit them. And creative schemes like this one, teaching men to cook, also brings people together. I suffer with my mental health and it's been a great, great help. And I was living on beans on toast and ready meals and such, you know. I wouldn't eat vegetables. Now I'm like a vegetarian. 
But as our worlds open up post-COVID and we stride towards the future, challenges remain. And homelessness is one of the biggest. It's why the president of the CIH has chosen End Youth Homelessness as her campaign focus and is raising money walking the southwest coast path. If we look at some of the towns and the villages around here, in Devon and Cornwall, where people want to come on holiday, you look at the impact of that on the private rental markets. We're not talking about getting a foot on the ladder of owning a home. We're talking about being able to rent somewhere to live. Um, and I think young people have been disproportionately affected by this. Whether it's environmental sustainability or tackling the cost of living, bringing people together or offering new opportunities, social housing providers across the country are rising to the challenge. Thanks for watching this special showcase version of Reinventing Homes. The programme's now available to watch in full on the CIH website. From all of us here, goodbye.